Hello folks. In this week's episode, what I want to demo is how you can actually set dynamic filters inside of Azure Data Factory for your Microsoft Graph Data Connect pipeline. What we're seeing right now is my uh, Data Factory Workbench. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a new copy data activity. I'm going to rename this to copy emails. From the source, I'm going to go and bring my M365 messages which is a data set I created uh, that points to Office 365 data. I'm going to go and select my Azure Data Lake as the sync. So normally what you would do is you would go in and you would import the schema, make sure that all the fields are loaded from the emails, and you need to specify a date filter. You have several options for the messages data set. Every data set has different options. In the case of emails, you can do on uh, you can do a filter on receive date. You can do it on send date time. In our case, we're just going to pick receive date, and then you need to go and pick date. So I can go in and say, all right, so I want to do let's say from November thirteenth to um, November fourteenth. That's all good. So when I run this pipeline, it's going to go and extract twenty four hours worth of data between those two dates. What you can also do is you can go and let's say you want to do a regular export of your data. You can go in and do a new trigger and I can do, all right, I want to create a schedule trigger that is going to happen, let's say, um, every day, for example. I can go in and do that, right? So every day the trigger will go and execute and it will extract that information. The problem is Every 24 hours, I'm going to go in and extract the exact same time range. I'm going to extract the, uh, from November 13th to November 14th. So what I want to do is I want to set a dynamic filter. So the way to do this is inside of the actual filters. So when you go in here, you have this option here to go and specify add dynamic, um, add dynamic content. So if you click on this, you're going to get the formula pane to open. And you can go and look into functions. You can see that we have different date functions. So right now I am in the start time date. So what I want to do is I want to go in and I want to add time to right now. And I'm going to go and add minus one day. And actually this is my bad. What I'm going to do is I want to add, um, Sorry, I want to add dates, right? So it's this function here that I want. So I want to add days. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying, all right, so I want you to take the current time that the pipeline is going to be running. This is the time that I go and I trigger the pipeline. And I'm going to say, add, uh, remove one day from that. So it's essentially going to go back 24 hours. So I'm going to click OK on this. I'm going to do the same thing for the end date, but this time I'm going to go in and simply select the UTC now, which is going to give me the time at which I run the pipeline. So right now what I have is I have my date filters specified dynamically, which will always ensure me that I go and get the past 24 hours worth of data. So if I go in here, I can go and validate, make sure that everything is good. Everything looks good. I can go and publish that, publish it. And then when I go in and I trigger this pipeline, if I want to double check to make sure that the dates are correct, what I can do is if I go and do, let me just wait for the pipeline to be published. I can go and do trigger now, which is going to go and start a new pipeline run. From there, I can go in the monitor tab and I can see that my graph show pipeline is currently running. And from there, you can see we have this little icon here that says input. Right? So this little arrow with the uh, entrance door. So if you click on this, you're going to be able to view what the start date and end time is. And that's going to give you exactly the past 24 hours based on when you executed that pipeline. So hopefully you folks learn how to go and create dynamic filters inside of Azure Data Factory in order for you to be able to apply that to your Microsoft Graph Data Connect pipelines. Until next time.